Her father died when she, she was 11 years old. She helped her three younger brothers. And uh, so she learned to work very early. Uh, she learned how to get through discouragement and tough times. She was an overcome, overcomer who left the farm and went to Portland by herself, which was in those days kind of a scary thing for an Eastern Oregoner to go to Portland and the big city. Uh, she learned to meet challenges head on and not give up. Uh, she was a, uh, had a lot of uh, personal qualities that were really exceptional. She was quiet, not pushy, was kind, loving, respected of others, intelligent, witty, and a hard worker. She was a very fine wife and uh, a very good friend to many people as testified by your presence today. And uh, uh, she was also a very good nurse. She loved her family and taught them well. Uh, and I'm happy that Jay was able to be married to her for 36 long years. That was a good thing for Jay. Uh, I'm sure his life was better because of his relationship with Ann. And uh, I know that's a fact. Uh, by the way, Ann was also a very good pinochle player. And on many occasions, uh, Jay and I uh, were, uh, uh, which were the opposing opponents, found out very soon that she was a good player. Uh, and Jay often got beat, didn't you, Jay? <laughs> so, uh, uh, she was a sharp lady and uh, a kind lady and one that we would always be able to uh, uh, be friends with and wasn't pushy and a good friend. And so that was a real blessing. We all miss her very much. And we're all better for having known him. Uh, so let us pray. Our Father, uh, you have shot... Uh, excuse me, I've got on the wrong paper. Uh, pardon me. So... Uh, at this time, we want to uh, have friends and family share experiences you've had with Anne in your life. And uh, please share your experiences and enrich the lives of the rest of us. So who has a microphone? Should we have a microphone that they can bring around? Is there one, Anne? No, I don't think so. No, Anne? Okay. Oh, you'll have to speak up. They can come up here. Thank okay, come up here. Yeah, that'll work. So if you'd like to come up and talk, please do. Have lost time my husband Leland and I enjoyed playing pinochle with them for quite a few years. Uh, we started when they lived out in Scapoos. We didn't play often, but we played with them. And when they moved into Beaverton Lodge, it became a weekly thing that we went over and played pinochle with Jay and Ann. I was always Jay's partner. Leland was always Ann's partner. I've never known anyone who could shoot the moon any more often than Ann. <laughs> this continued even after she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So we had to alter the rules a little bit and help her some. And it was a challenge more to keep Jay awake than it was to help Ann. <laughs> She didn't have any children. 
And the first question out of our mouth was, is there snow down in California? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. Well, we don't want to go then. <laughs> <laughs> so mother never did remarry. She had some uh, suitors when she lived on Southeast Taylor. And she turned those down. And when she became a nurse, she was a wonderful nurse. She was brought up as a Christian girl, and she would pray with her patients before she took them into bed at night. And that was a wonderful thing to remember. She had prayer with them. And uh, I can't think of anything else that's really special. I know that we used to hunt uh, the June, uh, um, the wild huckleberries were on, and I remember we'd take a little tin cup and go out and gather. Sometimes we'd have half a cup, and sometimes we'd fill the cup with these little tiny things, littler than the end of your little finger. But uh, Mother would make shortcake, and that's already been mentioned in the, uh, the talk that you gave. But we're, we're proud to have uh, uh, a sister like our sister. She was very smart. I think she even bypassed some classes when they needed nurses. I think they whisked her off to school and took her right out of college and she didn't have to do her pre-nursing uh, pre requirements. They just took her right into nursing. And she was very smart and she passed and that was her graduation. So that's what I remember about our dear sister. But I'm, I'm Harold, the youngest one. Ann always took credit for the nice guy that I am. <laughs> she was the one that was assigned to me when I was in diapers. So uh, uh, she she took care of many of the many of the responsibilities that would have fallen to my mother uh, because she, she was just, she was assigned to me, yeah. And um, there were times when, when there were some interesting things happening in school. See, we lived just up the road about a quarter of a mile. And while I was in the first grade, something happened that was very embarrassing to me. And I left, uh, I left the school building and ran all the way home about a quarter of a mile. I guess I was bawling loudly all the way <laughs> because she had the door open. <laughs> she took care of my uh, embarrassment. And then, <laughs> I won't say what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I have to? <laughs> I think you just did. <laughs> anyway, I will always remember my sis. I am Ann's sister. I, <laughs> <laughs> Ann was my sister. And I want to elaborate on the farmhouse that we were in uh, when I was born. Uh, there was no running water, no central heat, no telephone, no electricity, no radio. Uh, it was really quite typical of rural living in the late 20s and early 30s. And like my brother was talking about, uh, each of these, of us three younger children, younger boys, uh, were assigned to one of the older children. And uh, on days when we were going to church, these older older children would take care of the younger children, and uh, that was very typical. Harold has uh, mentioned some things I didn't know about. <laughs> and uh, uh, like my brother John said, I'm sure we'll see her again in the kingdom. <clears throat> That's if we get there. Son of uh, Van Merrill, and uh, one of my good memories <clears throat> of her was uh, first time Grandpa invited me to go hunting. Went and stayed the night at their house with Scott Poos and, and uh, got up, I think, at four in the morning, grabbed on, we were heading over to Eastern Oregon. <clears throat> and 
And I didn't expect Grandma to be up that early, but knowing that what she did for her career, took care of everybody, and being a nurse, uh, it was just, that's what she was good at, with uh, her grandkids and her kids and just about everybody. We're all gonna miss her. I lost in Metchar, her great-grandson, and a couple of stories that I know about my great-grandma was, uh, when I was, well, when I was growing up, my dad used to always, when they would meet up or a get together or something, my dad would always say, you gotta go walk grandma. I go, I don't want to, I'm playing video games, no. But, uh, so I get up and I go walk out her out, and that was going around the time when I was in middle school. Middle school was not a fun time for me. It was a very tough time, and she always would walk me out, and she would get in the car, you know, and I would go. And she turned to me, she looked me straight in the eye and said, you know, you're turning out to be a very great kid, and I'm very proud of you. And I would say, and I just want to say, oh, thank you, even though I didn't believe it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but having her say that, it really helped, it helped me a lot, and it helped me get through the time. And when I got to high school, she would still say that, and now I finally believed her. <laughs> so I'm very thankful for that. And about uh, last week, we, me and my mom, we drove to Seattle, and we stopped by Scott Poose, and we're driving through Scott Poose, and we saw their house, driving by Jay's old house. And it brought back a ton of memories, like when growing up, and they used to have like, a blackberry bushes across the street from where they lived. And I, one time, uh, my mom always tells me this story, they were all panicking and everything because they couldn't find me or anything. They had no idea where I was. And all of a sudden, they get across the street, and they see me, with my face covered with blackberries. <laughs> like, I'm not talking like, just like a little bit here, I'm talking the whole face <laughs> covered with blackberries. And so, great grandma took me back to the house and got me all fixed up and got all the blackberries off me, so I'm very grateful for what she's done for me in my life. Mom's uh, son, and I was a contributing factor to a lot of her gray hairs. <laughs> this one instance, and I really don't, don't really remember it offhand, but she talked about it on numerous occasions, so it's got to be true. Um, it was very early in my, my uh, life. I was about three years old, I think. We were living over in northeast Portland, and we were about a block and a half away from where they were building the Banfield Freeway. Okay? So uh, one day I decided they needed a supervisor down there at the, at the, uh, at the uh, construction site. So off I go. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to supervise this operation. And to get from point A to point B, I had to walk this block and a half across this very busy street in Portland. But what do I know about busy streets? I was three years old. <laughs> so off I go. And uh, I imagine that mom was pretty worried when she looked around and didn't see me around playing where I normally played. And she probably got pretty panicky, too, when she went from house to house, knocking on doors, saying, has anybody seen Rick? Well, she fi finally found a neighbor that said, yeah, I think he went that way. So there she goes, on down the block and a half, across the busy street, finds me sitting on the bank, happy as a lark, watching all the heavy equipment down below. But I don't think she was as happy as I was at that time. <laughs> So um, we moved to uh, Park Rose, and in Park Rose, that's where I started playing Little League Baseball. And she was quite involved in all my sports. Um, at that time, she actually took a class in scorekeeping, and uh, so she could um, keep the books during the game. And she did help out in the, in the uh, snack bar quite a bit. And with a bunch of little kids running around throwing baseballs and swinging bats, it's no wonder uh, her medical training came in handy <laughs> once in a while. This one instance, uh, I, I can vividly remember this. Um, my best friend dis dislocated his finger, his little finger, and it was sticking out at a weird angle. And none of, none of us kids have ever seen anything like that. We were just freaking out, like, oh, look at that, that's terrible. Mom was down on the field, and within two seconds, she had the thing pop back into place. Goodness <laughs> me. So uh, we were thankful she was a nurse. But, there are other, there's other instances where I don't think she was uh, as fond of being as involved in my sports as uh, she was before. 
This one, this one instance, I was playing football for Luga Junior High School. And this was a time of the year just following a, a major um, rainstorm, which could have been any time in Oregon. But, <laughs> but this is during football season. And um, Waluga was a fairly new school. It was just two years old. So our athletic field was basically a flat piece of ground. Hardly any grass on it at all, so you can imagine what it looks like when it, after it rains. Well, our football coach decided he wanted to make sure none of us was afraid to get dirty. So he picked a spot on this field. Uh, it had like two, two or three inches of standing water and about three inches of mud. That's where we held our practice that day. So we're running all our plays and our drills and all that stuff. We're having a good old time sloshing around in this mud and splashing around. And uh, you can imagine what our uniforms look like at the end of this practice. And we have a game coming up, you know. And so they had to get clean. And uh, the school didn't have any laundry facilities. So we had to take our uniforms home. So, so that night, I come walking through the door, I'm kind of hanging, Mom, could you wash these? And she looks at those things, and she gives a, her patented expression, Oh, good grief. <laughs> so it took her a while. It took her about three or four wash cycles, but she eventually got those uniform clean. And she must have done a good job, because at the end of the season, we had this awards banquet. And uh, she won the award for, for the mom award, I guess it was. And her prize, it was a box of laundry. I had to did things that way, and Ann was a clinically trained nurse. And so sometimes there's a little bit of a rub, and she may have said, that's what she said to you, I'm not sure. <laughs> what was that she said again? Good grief. Good grief. Did she say that to you? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Going, going, gone. Okay. We thought of you with love today, but that is nothing new. We thought about you yesterday and days before that too. You left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. We think of you in silence. We often speak your name. None. Now all we have are memories and your picture in a frame. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you did not go alone. A part of us went with you on the day God called you home. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same, but as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Very nice.